Okay, class, this is our third lecture in mass communication. Okay, based on a few things. Some of the first and then the second chapter of Stanley Barron's book. Our agenda is for me to remind you about getting in your questions and concerns and things you learned every week on Blackboard. Three things I learned and one muddy thing. You can have more than one muddy thing if you want to. We'll quickly review what we did in the last class, and then our topics today are to do a quick, I would say, overview of development of media in the U.S., <clears throat> and we'll talk about money in media, mostly advertising, that is to say, and then we'll talk about assignments for next week. So just to remind you about getting those in. So in the first class, we did a big chunk of chapter one in the book, the textbook. In the last class, we talked about these three things. That one to many is what comprises mass communication. We talked about the influence of mass communication on culture. Culture being shared values of, of people. Um, and we did, let me see here, I'm going to move this down a little bit. And then we talked about media literacy, which is the goal of this class, is to make you and us smarter about uh, media. And uh, that's what we did. Okay, now I've got to do a few little things here to make this work right. And I have to click under the bar to be able to shift. And um, remember, this is our um, format for analyzing a piece of mass communication. <clears throat> and we called it Smamberger. Yeah, Smamberger. Source, medium, audience, ma message, Smam, bias, Smam, effect and response member okay <coughs> read advertising advertising media in the US so you won't see books would really be um, first books is the topic books are the topic of uh, our next fourth week lecture um, and books existed uh, even before newspapers uh, but they never carried advertising. Um, but books were definitely uh, here in the U.S. and had an influence on things. In fact, uh, Thomas Paine's uh, book or pamphlet called Common Sense had a significant influence on uh, the Revolutionary War in the United States. But um, we're going to focus on pretty much everything except books. So the overarching um, line is uh, first, OO stands for out of home, out of home advertising, <clears throat> meaning posters and billboards and um, um, and for us it means advertising on buses and taxis and advertising in the subways. That was, a, was not, of course, the case at the beginning of the colonies, but there was out of home, and there were posters. Okay. And local newspapers, magazines, uh, electricity was put to certain uses, and some inventions were made in terms of radio waves and what could be done with them, and then we had radio. And then, um, in addition to sending sound waves on the radio waves, it was invented to send pictures. And so, pictures and sounds were carried on radio waves and then on cables and then computers came along and we ended up with the internet and then computers became very portable with a lot of features added like phones and cameras and we end up with this amazing little device our mobile phone. Uh, technological advances <coughs> had a huge impact on creating these new media forms. Uh, we 
where we spent some time talking about um, Gutenberg in the last class, the movable type printing press, and um, how that got books into the hands of the middle classes and led to uh, some revolts, one of which was called the Reformation, a revolt against the Catholic Church. Um, the movable type printing press turned into more and more books, turned into newspapers. Um, steam engines were invented in the early part of the 19th century and put to work. The power of boiling water, creating steam, creating pressure, moving things. And we had um, trains, locomotives run by steam. <clears throat> that was a major uh, advance for humanity, um, enabling the transport of people and goods much more quickly than in the past. Um, steam power uh, uh, leading to locomotives meant that um, actually those locomotive tracks were used to run the wires for te or telegraph. Telegraph was really the first electronic medium. Remember Morse code? D -d 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 -dash, dash, dash, dash. Um, yeah, so, and then we have radio. And then, as I say, we had the ability to send sound and pictures via the radio waves and the internet. It was invented in mobile phones. Mobile phones, by the way, use radio waves too. Otherwise, we'd be walking around with all these wires, and that would be quite a mess, wouldn't it? <clears throat> so, out of home. This is a posted bill. It's a little poster that would have been glued up. Uh, this one actually would have run in in England, and this is an ad for New Britannia. Uh, it's an ad to encourage people to go on a little boat ride and colonize Virginia in 1609. You can see the date at the bottom. So people were gluing up these bills, posted bills, in parts of cities where people could read them as they went around about their daily life. They weren't very big couple of feet by couple of feet. And uh, posters, this is World War I, uh, advanced quite a bit. Uh, color printing. Uh, this one, uh, a lot of the posters around this time period, the late, the late 1800s, early 1900s, are collector's items because um, the artistic talent that went into them was pretty amazing, uh, including this one. <clears throat> Here's a more recent ad a couple of years ago for GOT, Game of Thrones, where uh, they put a shadow of a dragon on a bus, which is pretty cool. Um, out of home is a pretty vital medium, um, mostly because um, it's unavoidable. There's uh, for Vestry Street, Soho, near the Holland Tunnel. Another out-of-home ad. So, one of the first to run ads, in fact, pretty much only ads, and not a lot of other content. And still, uh, not a huge percentage of U.S. advertising spending, but consistently growing, solid share. Newspapers started not that long after Gutenberg invented the movable printing press. People wanted something that was about more daily events and current events, not just these big tomes and repositories of uh, knowledge, but something that um, you know you could talk about uh, what was happening now. And so um, we had newspapers. They were usually weekly to begin with. Um, this is one. Um, published, I believe, this looks like 1765. Um, Benjamin Franklin was probably involved in this. Benjamin Franklin, one of the forefathers of the U.S., United States of America, uh, made his living as a publisher, publishing a newspaper and publishing books, etc. So these type of papers were fairly expensive. They came out once a week, just uh, four pages, just, you know, one folded page, not a lot of stuff in there, but there was a lot of politics in there, and uh, 
newspapers had a big effect on on, um, on um, the colonies going to war with Great Britain. And um, newspapers were really the first national mass medium carrying advertising. Um, and uh, there were hundreds of newspapers. They turned into daily publications, not weekly. Here's one during the Civil War in the New York uh, Tribune. Um, that's Abraham Lincoln on the left, uh, as it says here, when he campaigned for president in 1860. Believe it or not, there was no political advertising in those days. <laughs> Zero. In fact, the candidates didn't even did not even campaign. They stayed home, and uh, as Lincoln did in Springfield, Illinois, in his case, and he met with people kind of behind the scenes, kind of cutting some deals and, and uh, working behind the scenes. If he wanted to get the word out to the public, he would send a letter to the editor of a newspaper, which he did several times. Um, first national newspaper, USA Today, launched in 1982. I actually worked for the company that published USA Today, the Gannett Company, uh, for 10 years. Uh, I worked in the out-of-home advertising division, though. So this was Gannett's attempt. Gannett was the leading newspaper company in the country. It was their attempt to try to bring newspapers back into the forefront of, um, of uh, life in the U.S., uh, newspapers having been eclipsed by radio and then TV. And USA Today is still out there, several million circulation, given away in lots of hotels. Um, I'm sure you know who this guy on the right is. He bought the Washington Post, one of the primary and most highly regarded newspapers in the country these days. Obviously based in Washington, D.C., doing a lot of political reporting. Um, newspapers have had a very hard time of it for the last 30, 40 years, uh, being eclipsed first by radio and TV and then by the internet. And the internet, radio and TV took all their national ad dollars. They still had a lot of money to be made with local ad dollars and local retail. But uh, internet took the classified dollar business. And classified is um, job, help wanted ads, real estate ads, car ads, uh, auto ads, uh, all gone online now. And yet, newspapers crusade uh, for justice in many cases. They have reporters, investigative reporters on staff who have had a profound effect on our society. I mean, think about Watergate. Hopefully you've heard of that, and leading to the resignation of President Richard Nixon in the early 70s. That was started by two reporters um, at the... Uh, at the Washington Post, as a matter of fact. Um, and so, uh, people like Jeff Bezos, so a few people like Jeff Bezos have stepped in and purchased these struggling entities to, to keep them going as much as anything. <clears throat> Magazines from the Arabic makassin, or so I'm told, meaning storehouse. So magazines um, came into their own in the 18th, 19th centuries, late 18th and the 19th century. They were for the rich, for people who had leisure time. And uh, before you had, uh, you know, 20,000 cable channels to choose from and your social media feeds to look at, reading a magazine was, was considered a pretty nice way to spend a few hours of uh, leisure time. A variety of content, pictures, advice, all the content filtered through an editorial staff, and you kind of choose the magazine that suits your interests, and spending time with it was considered quite a pleasure. Magazines like newspapers and all printed material have also had a hard time. They are converging onto the internet as our, ma as our newspapers, but... Um, there we are with magazines. Time magazine was a was a big influential one, still being published, but like uh, the Washington Post, Time magazine was bought by another internet billionaire, um, the guy who founded a company called Salesforce.com. 
has bought um, Time Magazine, still publishing it. Still pretty good. Magazines are also interesting because you can get very niche with magazines. What I mean by that is, uh, oh, I think I'm done. <laughs>